And here we go. Oh my gosh, friends, everyone. I am so, 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 like, I can't even stand it, excited to bring to you today uh, a beautiful story of my dear, dear, uh, now friend, but graduate from my Amazing You program. And her story is so compelling. And I'm so proud of her for being courageous to come on in and tell you uh, what it had been like for her from beginning to now when we started working together. So hey, Melinda, woo! <laughs> Go ahead and introduce yourself. Tell people who you are, a little bit about your life. Okay, my name is Melinda and um, I'm a mother of two grown children, a 27, 29 year olds, and I'm a grandmother of two beautiful little girls. Okay. Um, I've been married now 30 years. And uh, <laughs> made it. And they said we wouldn't last six months, and here we are at thirty years. <laughs> um, we, my husband and I, both own our own Mercedes Repair and Restoration Company, and um, we've been at it for quite a few years. We work together. I do his accounting work or mm -hmm. our accounting work because you're and, an accountant. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Um, and uh, unfortunately, I've been disabled for quite a few years because of a really um, crazy medical condition. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, just recently, I uh, underwent a surgery and it has changed my life. Yes. Better. Yes. <laughs> and, um, Leslie and the group has um, walked me through it and we were together through the whole entire uh surgery so it was a lot of fun going through it with everybody and having the support yes. and um they were able to see the success yes of surgery so yes. that's amazing and so let's back back you up to february yes before you got on a clarity breakthrough call can you describe what you were struggling with at that time well let's say um it was the darkest time of my life it was a point where i didn't want to continue living because of this the this pain i was going through mm -hmm. the stress i was in um all i can say it was a horrible dark time of my life mm -hmm. um i wasn't getting along with my family i wasn't getting along with outsiders mm -hmm. i would retreat back to my bedroom um i was basically the super glue of my family and i felt like uh the super glue has dried up and I wasn't able to fix mm -hmm. things because I was a fixer of the family. Mm -hmm. um, the one that paid the bills, the one that, you know, if, if I wasn't the fixer, then I was no good to the family. Mm -hmm. And um, it, my pain was so severe that um, I was, I noticed that I was very angry. I wasn't able to um, feel my emotions the right way. I was taken out on everybody and I couldn't understand why. Mm -hmm. um, it was just a very, very, dark, deep, mm -hmm. horrible time of my life. And I kept getting worse and worse and didn't understand why. Oh, I wasn't okay. able to mm -hmm. feel those emotions and, and understand why I was feeling that way. And yes. I, you know, my family was trying to help me, but I wasn't accepting what they were trying to do because I felt like they were against me and not knowing why. Wow, thank you for sharing that. So you're scrolling along on Facebook and you see an advertisement, apparently. The most beautiful picture. Cut. <laughs> <laughs> a piece of art that we all love, yes. It was absolutely gorgeous. Caught my attention and I started listening to it. And what I did is I, sorry, I went to the bathroom and I started watching it. The webinar, yeah. Yes. And everything that was saying was me. And it says, do you need help in this area? Yes. Hmm. Do you need help in this area? Oh boy, I do. Do you need help in that area? And you can see my emotions right now. It's beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> I needed help in every single one of those categories. Hmm. So the next thing I did, I went and signed up. I put my name in there, my phone number, my email, whatever it asked for. And I said, I know I need this help. If I don't get the help, I don't know where I'm going to be tomorrow. What a leap. Oh, what a leap I, to do that. If I didn't do that, I didn't know where I was going to be. Mm. I knew I needed the help. I knew I needed to take that step. Because if well, I there's did, going to be a lot of tears in this call. Let's just say that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. 
we can't apologize when, when no I, it's touching it's so moving it's, what you have walked through and i just i think i'm hearing it you know in more fullness right now too just the gravity of what the hurt and the pain that you were walking through with that you would literally be able to resonate with the webinar and know that I've got to do something. And you got on a call and Doug, who's my breakthrough call coach, spoke with you. How was that for you? I was a disaster. I kept up, I'm so sorry, Doug. I don't know what's wrong with me. I think, but you know, while I was on that call, Doug has something about him where he, he calmed me down and he mm. was able to talk with me and ask me these such, such important questions. And, and he heard everything I was saying, even though I was rattling on like some crazy person, I felt, but he kept assuring me that everything's going to be okay. Don't worry about it. Let's just keep going. And the next question and the next question. And I, I just felt so calm and I kept thanking him over and over for just Aww. listening to me, you know, and, and, and then, the funny thing is, well, the strange thing is, is that the call that I had with Doug was I kept directing my issues and my concerns to a death in my family, which was my sister. I thought all my issues were revolving around her mm. and it wasn't. Mm. Once I joined, I found out otherwise, and we'll get into that later. So the clarity call provided clarity for you. How long had you been struggling prior to the call? I would say probably four or five years. Okay. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was horrible. And did any kind of fears come up when you were ready to invest in yourself? When no, I didn't care. <laughs> I didn't care what it cost. I said, you know what? This is about me now. Yes. I need the help. I, you know, I spend money on this and that and, you know, buy a car, buy this, but why can't I spend it on myself? Mm. This is all about me. I need help. And if I can't help myself by reading these self-help books that weren't doing it for me or watching these other little things on TV and this and that, <laughs> and all the downloads I did, why can't I just invest in myself? Yeah. And that's what I did. I didn't care what it would cost. And I'll never forget for as long as I live your first welcome call. Uh, and when I when you had entered into the program and I got to meet you and got to connect with you. And of course, there was immediate affinity, uh, not at all surprised by that. Uh, uh, but I could I could see what an amazing bright light you were. And I know that wasn't your experience on the call, but I was so excited to be able to, you know, honor you and bring you into the program. And that was such an exciting call. I was also in Costa Rica, which was just bizarre for me to be talking to you from out of the country. So you get into the program and how long did it take for you to experience something positive or start to experience changes? I know the first week, actually, after I spoke with you the first time, I felt immediate connection. I'm like, she gets me. She understands me. Mm. She's not judging me. There is no judging here. No. It's, it, I was like, Leslie gets me. She understands. I did. I did. I did. And I do. And that's just such a blessing. There was that kind of affinity. And yes, I had that kind of heart and empathy for you. But yeah, there is that kind of when, when we know that we're a right match. It's so cool. Yes. Yes, yes. That, <laughs> that made me feel immediately like, wow, this is going to be good for me. So but, right on that call, you felt encouraged and there was hope. Yes, immediately. Yeah. Good. immediately. Good. But then once I, once I started, you know, with the program, the first week, I knew I had to put myself in it. Because if you're not putting yourself to work and doing the work that you created, you're not going to get anywhere. Right. And it's an investment. You got to do the work. Exactly. Yeah. So, good for you. <laughs> so while I started doing the work, I was like, wow, this is amazing. This is really everything about me. And I've got to do the work. I've got to pull out those emotions and start working on my emotions. It was, it was a way where I was able to work on myself. Yeah. And really get in there and start doing my work. Yes. And then on the calls, it was just such a delight to get on those calls and be able to voice what I did and have you talk about the work that I sent you and just do that confirmation and, and the celebrating and it, oh, yeah, we do it. Don't we? 
We yes, love you. <laughs> the, the celebrations are just amazing. And really, I walk away and I was like, wow, I can't wait until next week. Awesome. I can't wait to, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so you started to feel hope and encouragement right out of the gate from the first call, but you also took ownership and moved into the program with, with the sense that, you know, I've got, I got to dig in here. I got to do the work and you would do the work. And what kind of changes did you start to notice and how early on once you got going? Well, I started noticing the way I would talk to people immediately. I knew that the way I was raised, you want to talk to other people the way you want them to talk to you. Mm -hmm. So I noticed communication was the key role there. If I want someone to be kind to me, well, I better step back and start changing the way I talk to other people, even though I was, I thought I was being kind, but <laughs> you I are guess, seriously kind. That is more of who you are though. <laughs> But I, I guess because of the pain and the anger and the black cloud and the, the secluding myself in my room and slamming the door, mm. I, I guess I really wasn't kind to those who really loved me. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't understand what was going on. But once I started doing the first lesson, I was like, whoa, I got to step back and, and start really using those inner emotions and, and pull out and watch what I'm saying and how I say it. Hmm. And once I started doing that, I saw the reflection from my loved ones and, and especially my husband. And it, it started working. I said, wow, I want more of this. I need more of this. <laughs> That's so awesome. So it was pretty quick out of the gate, fa fairly soon, the first couple of weeks of the program. Uh, what for you, and I know this is a really hard question, was the most transformational thing about the program and the work that you did? I would say boundaries, immediate, the boundaries. Okay. <laughs> you don't even have to ask that twice. <laughs> I learned boundaries again, which I knew them, but what happened? I don't know, I lost them. Mm. Once I started putting those boundaries back in place, mm -hmm. because as I started looking back at what was going on, mm -hmm. I was able to see clearly again and say, mm -hmm. hmm, People were really stomping on me. People were really taking mm. advantage of me. But it wasn't just people doing that. I was allowing it. Mm. And once I started noticing that and I started really putting forth the, the lesson in place and following step by step the lessons and what we discuss in our little in our group meetings, mm -hmm. that's when I really just sprouted. You did. <laughs> you are like, you are like expert boundary setter and the voice that emerged and oh your ability God. to just speak out loud. It was so helpful, not only to, to you, but everybody in the group who was like, whoa. And it was so resonant of who you were. Like you, like you were just speaking your truth. And I loved the way you did it. You have your own unique ways of setting boundaries and, and expressing yourself. But, you know, and we had some good giggles about it, but you rocked that. You oh, rocked boundaries. It really, it really changed who I was mm -hmm. and it brought me to where I needed to be. Mm -hmm. And uh, now when someone says, I need you to, uh, I look at them and I was like, hold on a second. Let me check my calendar. I'm sorry. I'm busy that day. Uh, you know, I, I will not that I want to be nasty to anybody, but it's all about what I am capable of doing and what I want to do now. It's not not allowing. Yes, and, and at that time, I mean, you were really navigating so much. You were navigating a, a, a toxic work environment, a big a, a lot of hours that you were coming home exhausted with. I believe uh, how many years was your chronic pain like so, um, 17. 17 years of chronic pain. So you're just trying to get through these days and for you to start setting boundaries then and honoring yourself and saying, you know, this I can do and this I can't and I need to take care of myself and how to do that. It was impressive. And I can tell by your, the way you're describing it now, it's still happening for you, right? You're like considering yourself in your life in order to create the life that would be okay for you, that would care for you that would love you and not just exhaust you by day's end. Right, right. Yeah. 
And I'm able to speak up for myself more where people would say something that wasn't acceptable and I'm able to speak back mm -hmm. in a very pleasant way and say, I'm you sorry, but that really was not nice what you said or how you said it. Maybe you want to try again. <laughs> <laughs> maybe you want to try that again. Yes. Again, or maybe I misunderstood what you were trying to say or the meaning of that. Mm -hmm. But before I would just like blow up. I mean, the, the lid would just mm -hmm. go off and, and there was no trying to come back and talk to me because I just shut down and I went to my room. I'm like, I'm done. And not anymore. There's no reason. For you didn't that. experience. You stopped experiencing as things as injury, and then be reactionary, and then cut people off and distance. You oh, definitely yeah. stopped doing that whole thing. Exactly. Exactly. And I love the way you even talk now, uh, and how deliberate and thoughtful and on purpose you express yourself. Right? You're considering things. Right? You're you're centered and and holding on to yourself. But you know, I just think you're the bee's knees. So. Um, <laughs> Can you say a few things about what it was like to work with me as your personal coach? Hard as that is for me to let go. <laughs> well, I had, let's put it this way. I had the most difficult time saying goodbye. I know. Every Monday I was just like glowing. I was like, oh, Sunday was coming around. I'm like, woo, here comes Monday. I can't wait for my call. Honestly. It is know, hard to say goodbye. So it was hard for me too. It definitely it was, was hard for me too, because the bond that we have uh, for, first of all, it's forever. It's absolutely forever from here into eternity uh, and my kinship and my love for you and my heart for you and my friendship with you that, that never ends, but it is so hard to say goodbye after there was so much connection and bond. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. This is from my heart. I have to say is that you actually have this love where you you give this love to us mm. unconditional mm. and here goes the tears again <laughs> this, i thank you for those you just don't judge us and what's you just judge us. what's to judge melinda you're amazing <laughs> what's to judge but there's nothing to judge anymore <laughs> but you just raise us up to where we actually should be mm. we're like that that all of Every woman is different, but yet we're all the same. Mm -hmm. And some women are like a flower that has been stomped on. That's just starting to regrow. Mm. And I think I'm that woman that was stomped on in different ways. Mm. And here I am, that sunflower. Yes. Talked about. I'm yes. that sunflower that has just grown yeah. to six, seven foot tall and is going to keep growing and will never stop. Yes. You give us so much. You empower us. You just keep raising us and mm. um, give us what we, some of us have never had before. Mm. Uh oh, that got me. <laughs> there are so, so uh, many moments. Just such an honor. Never. Just such an honor and privilege. I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful. But you've given us. Thank it's you. It's true. And it's my, so honest my, for my heart. My honor and privilege. And, and it gives me so much to know that you have transformed in the way that you have. Like, who gets to do this? I'm humbled and I'm blessed and I'm grateful. So describe your life now. How's your, life? Life. How's your marriage? How is your day to day? My day to day is I wake up and I'm so thankful and I just bring in so much love and peace every day. Meditate on the, the health, the mm -hmm. love, the peace. I, I just honor myself. I've learned to honor myself and not yes. stomp on myself. I look in the mirror and I was like, wow, girl, you've got this. <laughs> yeah, I really do. Um, I just, I'm honest with myself mm -hmm. and I know that I deserve the honesty, not hide behind closed doors anymore. Yeah. Um, just true, authentic. I'm just authentic with everybody now. Um, I know I know you mentioned, right, I've had years ago, which I never brought out, I'll bring it out now for the first time, yeah. I had this problem where I thought I had to be a certain weight. So I and a doctor told me that if I lost so many pounds, yeah. that my condition would go away. Yeah. So me being 165 pounds at the time was obese in the doctor's eyes. So I lost the weight, I got down to 100 and 
10 pounds, which was way too skinny for a five, six big frame girl. Hmm. So I lost all the weight and it was my mission to stay thin for all these years. Hmm. I was miserable. And now I'm like, you know what? It's me. This is who I am. This is my frame. This is my body. I'm 145 now. I'll be 50 years old in January, which I'm very <laughs> proud to say. <laughs> for three years. And it's me. This is who I am. I'm am hmm. in love with myself with the body I have, which mm. I've been gifted. I did never, you never have discussed this. I just want to honor you and the courage of disclosing authentically and transparently this part of your life that was, you know, another little layer of struggle and, and self-esteem. And I did not know that a doctor had said that to you, which, you know, yeah. we could go on and on about how I feel about that just right there. Um, but this except that was the bomb shot I was saving for you. Well, good job. Nice saving it till the interview. Well, <laughs> I want other women to know they need to love themselves for yes. who they are. Yes. Whether you have blonde hair, brown hair, straight hair, curly hair, brown eyes, or blue eyes, you are beautiful. Yes. You are. Yes. Love yourself. Look at yourself in the mirror and love who you are. Yes. Tell me about any shifts in your marriage. Well, we have been getting along so good. It is just so amazing. The communication has happened again. And what, you know, what was the state of things when you started this journey? It was, I was ready to serve him papers. Yeah. It was so bad. It was awful. And then, you know, in the back of your mind, oh my gosh, we've been married so many years. How can I throw this away? And the guilt comes over you. And hmm. how will I do this? How now? I mean, our marriage was awful. It was awful for quite a few years. Hmm. And I don't know if it was a little bit of me just being the bickering wife um, because he works so many hours and he put me last all the time because of, you know, his working habits. Um, I know that he has to work the work a lot of hours because you know he's the main person at the business but you know he has a wife he has a house to take care of a family mm -hmm. and right. that really really got in the way of our of our relationship mm -hmm. but with me being able to express my feelings in a very positive way um without being that little chihuahua at his ankle <laughs> you know going at him he has really really risen to a point where i've never seen nice and um and i know it has to do with me taking this course and learning how to honor myself yeah. and how to speak to him in a different manner and that all come from well, and that's such a significant myself. shift right it's so easy to look at all the things about our partner but then you did that you know that beautiful ownership around well what am i contributing and you shifted yourself loving yourself and then speaking to him different and you got reward and and response and mirroring that has yes. resonated with that and it sounds like also kind of helping helping him become a better version of himself. Yes, yes. Hey, and I know there's more journey to happen there for the two of you, but that that shift that has happened where you're finding each other again, and it's not negative and reactive. And you're what are you a golden retriever now instead of a chihuahua? I guess. <laughs> yes, my little baby. <laughs> so you started to talk to women. Uh, and this certainly is an opportunity for t for you to share your heart for any woman out there who might be struggling in some of the ways or all of the ways that you describe. Uh, what do you want her to know? What do you want her to know? Well, I want I want other women to know that you're not alone. Mm. There's other women out there that are going ex through the same thing that you're going through. Mm -hmm. There's many struggles in life and you should not be ashamed of anything that you're going through reach out for help because this course is is a game changer mm -hmm. and um just speaking with somebody speaking and getting what you need can change not just your home environment but your work environment your social environment yes it can change 
your yeah. whole entire life, your mm. future mm. has changed mine. Mm. And the women that, that I was able to be with every Monday, <laughs> I mean, it is amazing how we are so much alike mm. and went through so many of the same struggles, but how we are so far apart, but so connected. And, and literally all over the states and uh, everywhere. So yeah, literally everywhere. apart, but also <laughs> different individuals. Yes, exactly, yeah. exactly. And you shouldn't be ashamed of of going through struggles. I and mean, yeah. don't be ashamed. It's okay. And uh, and the other thing is, it doesn't matter. This th these struggles do not pick on whether your race, your mm -hmm. age, whether you're yeah. married, you're not married, you have, you know, a blended family, his, mine, and ours, it, it, it will just get you at any time. And I, I just encourage you to please reach out and get some help because yes. it is a game changer. Yes. It, Leslie really brought me from the darkest part of my life to the best part of my life. And there's no looking back. There's no going back. I promise. This is where I just cry because I'm so <laughs> happy for you. I'm so happy you. for you. You are, you are such a bright light and you are you now in fullness and you are uh, you centered up in your truth of your identity and you're living her out loud and loving her. And it is clear on your face, like it is clear on your face for me from that first call to the woman that I'm looking at now, like she shines, she yeah. just shines now. This was not the same face uh, or the same woman in many ways. She was in there, but she was stuck. And you know, your health has changed. Uh, so much has changed in your life. It's just magnificent to witness uh, and a gift and a blessing for others to see because they can know too that is possible for them, that they do not have to stay in the dark and hurt and struggle, that there can be new life, there can be a fresh start, there can be a, a, a bright future uh, and a beautiful day by day experience. Anything else on your heart before I just cry some more? <laughs> I, I just encourage every woman, just be honest with yourself. Just be be yourself, be honest. And yeah. you know, with you being honest with yourself and, and getting the help and and just the world will, will adapt to you once you change. Right just on. Change. The world right does on. adapt. <laughs> the world can change its ways. You do you. You take care of you. You honor you. You invest in you. And you did it. Bravo. You did it, Melinda. The, the parade is happening. You are amazing. You worked hard. You got your reward. I'm so grateful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the courage of getting on this call, for speaking your truth, for sharing your story. You and I could talk forever. <laughs> I could just sit here and listen to you all day. <laughs> climb a mountain and just scream out to every woman out there. You know what? Uh, I would. I would do it a million times over. I really have a passion for helping women. In I know you do. And you have. You have today by sharing your heart and shining your bright light and telling your truth. Uh, and I feel like that's like a date you and I could have like a mountain climb down the road and we'll get to the top and check. <laughs> I love you. Uh, if anybody wants to know anything more about the journey, then you are welcome to watch uh, the Amazing You webinar. It's a complimentary masterclass. Uh, that's where it starts. Uh, and this is where it can end up. So I love you, Melinda. Thank you so much. We'll, we'll end this call for now, and then we're going to talk some more. <laughs>